For centuries, people were taught that Columbus was the first European to set foot in the Americas. But was he really the first? Archaeologists in the 1960s find evidence that another famous group of Europeans beat Columbus by nearly 500 years. Today we will see the same group that was the terror of coastal Europe for centuries would beat all other Europeans to the New World. This is Knowledge Voyage. The Vikings were renowned sea explorers. The poverty and harshness of their Norse homeland had led many to turn to the sea. And in the centuries that followed, Viking boats would raid as far away as Sicily, France and Ireland in search of trade, gold and women. Viking explorers eventually discovered the island of Iceland in about 870 AD. The island was large and almost entirely inhabited, apart from a small number of Irish monks who were promptly killed. The Norse would settle Iceland and loved its plentiful forests that provided timber for their famous longboats. However, the Vikings did not realise that Iceland's fertile soil was due to volcanic activity, and whilst volcanic soil is fertile, it is also very vulnerable to overexploitation. The Vikings eventually overused the soil and the forests died. To this day, Iceland is still Europe's most ecologically damaged country, and its once wide forests are no more. One of the descendants of the original settlers of Iceland was Leif Eriksson. He came from a fearsome line of Vikings. His grandfather had been exiled to Iceland from Norway for committing murder, and his father was the famous Eric the Red. Eric was himself a convicted murderer, but instead of execution, was banished from Iceland. This was a common punishment. Eric sighted a large island to the west of Iceland, which he named Greenland. He hoped that the description would encourage emigration to a green land, in sharp contrast to the rotted soils of nearby Iceland. His son, Leif Eriksson, was living at an interesting time for Iceland and the Vikings. Most of Europe by the end of the first millennium was Christian, and this included the Vikings' original homelands of Norway and Denmark. However, Iceland remained a Norse pagan holdout, but its paganism was being used as an excuse to exclude it from the trade markets of Western Europe. As a result, many Norse pagans on Iceland decided to convert to Christianity, and amongst them was Leif Eriksson. On a visit to the Scottish Hebrides Islands, he formally converted, and after his conversion, Eriksson was proclaimed as a Hirdsman, or official representative of the Norwegian king, Olag Tryggvason. Like Eriksson, the king was a Norse pagan convert to Christianity, and he decided to send his fellow convert to spread Christianity in Greenland. This was the same Greenland his father was living on, and unlike Leifr, Eric the Red was a staunch Norse pagan. This was a source of friction with his wife, who had followed her son's lead and converted to Christianity, much to Eric's disgust. The saga of Eric the Red tells us that this led to the couple experiencing many problems, including the wife's decision to refuse to sleep with him. We are sure this didn't exactly cool the already tense situation. On the way to Greenland, Ericsson's ship was blown off course by the fierce Arctic winds, and it was at this moment Ericsson spotted a coastline he had never seen before. He did not make landfall, but when he spoke to other Vikings about it later, he was told other explorers had seen this land from a distance. Amongst them was Bjarne Herjolfsson, who, like Ericsson, had seen the same coast from a distance but had declined to make landfall. Leifert Ericsson could not resist the thought of investigating further, and led an expedition to investigate. He traced Herjolfsson's route and found the coast of a large island, which Ericsson named Hedluland, or Flat Rock Land. Scholars believe this may have been Baffin Island in Canada. From there, Ericsson's team penetrated further south, coming across a heavily forested green area they called the Markland, or Forestland, and scholars think this may have been modern-day Labrador. However, the crowning glory of his exploration was when he came across a land filled with grapes and vines. He named this Vinland, or the Vineland. Leifer wintered there, and in the spring, Leifer Ericsson sailed back to Iceland with many of his goods. All of these exploits were written down in two sources, the Saga of Eric the Red and the Saga of the Greenlanders. However, these were often viewed with a grain of salt by European historians. Viking sagas often contain tales of trolls, elves and giants, and this is particularly true of the Furnaldar saga. Given this, for centuries European historians concluded that the Norse claims to have visited North America were wives' tales, and no different from tales of fights with dragons and ogres in caves. Instead, History gave Italian sailor Christopher Columbus the credit as the first European in North America. Not everyone believed the official story. In 1960, Norwegian husband and wife team Arne and Helga Ingstadt decided to carry out a dig. As Norwegians, these two archaeologists had been raised on tales of the Vinland saga of Ericsson and wanted to test them. Based on the descriptions in the sagas, they felt that Vinland was probably modern Newfoundland. Further support in this claim was Ericsson's descriptions of how long the days lasted which enabled them to pinpoint the line of latitude in the world where the sunlight would last this long. And with a team of other archaeologists, they carried out extensive digs in Newfoundland. To the amazement of the world, a large trove of Norse items was found by the archaeologists. And as the dig continued, the remains of Viking buildings such as earth-topped houses and blacksmiths were uncovered. 
Despite the presence of large game animals in the area, no remains of these animals were found in the houses. This is probably because the animals deserted the area as the winter set in, so they were not around to be hunted. And this would be consistent with the account in the sagas that Ericsson's men had only established a short-term settlement there for the winter before leaving. However, the excavation had proved one thing beyond any doubt, and that was that the Viking sagas were true, and Leifer Ericsson was now recognised as the first European in North America. There are monuments to commemorate Ericsson's achievement all over North America and indeed the wider world. In Minnesota, a land of many Norse migrants, a statue of Leifer Ericsson stands. And in Ericsson's homeland of Iceland, a statue of him has pride of place outside the city's Hallgrimskirke Cathedral, a gift as it happens from the people of the United States. There may be one last chapter in this tale of how Vikings beat Columbus. For centuries, it was believed Columbus was the first European in the Americas. And that was until archaeologists challenged the official story and found evidence that it was actually Ericsson and his Vikings. Or was it? We have already seen that the Vikings beat Columbus, shattering what history had taught for centuries. But did a group of other Europeans beat even the Vikings? Later Vikings visiting the area said they were frequently attacked by people they called the Skraelings. The Vikings said the language of these people sounded like Irish, and the people there wore white. And this has a curious similarity with the Irish legends of the land of the white men. And the Irish saint St. Brendan the Navigator did sail far away from Ireland, and there are even rumours he made it to North America. Archaeologists have confirmed that Irish monks beat the Vikings to Iceland, but did they beat them to the Americas too? Archaeologists found that the Vikings beat Columbus. Will they one day find that a group of other Europeans beat even them? Thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, thank you.